Ginkgo Bioworks had a tough Q3, largely due to the challenging macro environment and the phase-out of its COVID testing arm. The company's cell engineering segment holds immense promise, but recent data suggests it's still in its early stages. Investors eyeing substantial future value might need to exercise patience. The latest financial report from Ginkgo Bioworks, NYSE DNA, for the third quarter showed a bit of a dip, which wasn't entirely unexpected given the mix of economic challenges and the company winding down its K-12 COVID testing division. It seems investors are grappling with the fact that Ginkgo's business is still in its developmental phase, resulting in declining revenues and increased losses. However, the silver lining lies in Ginkgo's strides within the biopharma sector, where the potential for meaningful commercial success appears more promising. But it's crucial to note that any significant positive impact on share prices might take years to materialize, rather than happening in just a few months or quarters, unless there's a substantial shift in market sentiment. Big shout out to Seeking Alpha for sponsoring our video and its analytics. Make sure to get your 14-day free trial of Seeking Alpha. Premium via the link in the description. You can only get the 14-day trial through the link below, so make sure to check them out, guys. Ginkgo's recent earnings call heavily emphasized the intricacies of its business model, a recurrent theme in their recent quarterly discussions. This push to clarify their business approach seems to stem from the need to explain their recent performance, particularly the modest growth in cell engineering revenues and the perceived delay in realizing downstream value. At its core, Ginkgo's entire business model hinges on the belief that both scale and data will pave the way for a lasting competitive edge. Their cell engineering programs generate data that's expected to enhance strain engineering capabilities progressively. Although Ginkgo's database has substantially expanded in recent years, the financial outcomes haven't yet reflected the anticipated advantages of scale at this point. Nonetheless, there are observable improvements. Ginkgo has shared program-level data illustrating substantial early-stage advancements in the design slash build slash test cycle in some instances. Moreover, there's potential for shared efficiencies between the foundry and biosecurity divisions. The biosecurity sector's metagenomic data serves as training material for the cell engineering arm, while tools developed for cell engineering can be leveraged in the biosecurity division. Ginkgo's performance in cell engineering has been a mixed bag lately, especially with the decline in venture capital for industrial biotech. They've highlighted that the macro environment has stretched out sales cycles, prompting the company to counteract this by streamlining their contracting process, basing pricing on success, and prioritizing the biopharma sector. However, they've noted that selling drug discovery deals is more challenging than securing R&D contracts for manufacturing. By the end of the third quarter, Ginkgo had won 16 active programs running, marking a 36% year-on-year growth. Yet, the focus shouldn't solely be on the quantity of programs. Ginkgo's emphasis on capturing downstream value makes the quality of these programs even more critical. Securing a substantial deal with a heavyweight player like Pfizer holds greater significance than numerous smaller deals with startups that might have a lower chance of commercial success. Ginkgo's cell engineering sector is gradually leaning toward biopharma and agriculture segments, which seems promising in the long run. Customers in these areas likely possess the expertise necessary to scale up and commercialize production successfully. However, it may take a while for Ginkgo to see tangible downstream benefits, considering most of their pharma and biotech programs are still in early stages of development. To date, Ginkgo has wrapped up 103 programs, with 15 in the midst of commercialization and six already completed. Out of these six, 
Ginkgo has potentially realized around $100 million in value, especially contingent on how much value is linked to Kronos equity. While these numbers encompass Ginkgo's entire history and may not mirror future performance, the data suggests that the chances of program success are relatively modest, with commercialization standing as a significant challenge. Some of their successes include a flavor and fragrance ingredient developed for Robertea Confidential Specialty Chemical Ingredient with diverse applications enhanced production process for vaccinia capping enzyme at Aldevron. Several completed programs awaiting commercialization involve partnerships with Synlogic and Centriant Pharmaceuticals, as well as ventures into high-volume specialty and intermediate chemicals, personal care products, specialty materials, and natural product therapeutics. Beyond revenue from cell engineering and downstream value participation, Ginkgo is venturing into technology licensing. During the third quarter, they signed several evaluation agreements for tech licensing, which might lead to further agreements to continue utilizing the asset. These tech licensing deals aren't part of Ginkgo's program count, but could potentially offer a new revenue stream. Ginkgo anticipates that these tech licenses could generate revenue in the single to low double-digit million USD range, with successful deals expected within the coming year. In the recent quarter, Ginkgo finalized its last K-12 COVID testing contracts, leading to a significant drop in biosecurity revenue. Despite this, the biosecurity branch holds long-term potential, although it might take considerable time to realize its value. As AI and synthetic biology advance, there's a need to proactively manage and monitor associated risks. For instance, Ginkgo's BioRadar product collects samples from plane wastewater and voluntary airline passenger swabs across nine international airports. However, without the urgency brought by events like COVID-19, this segment's growth is expected to be gradual and may not fully justify Ginkgo's current valuation. From a financial perspective, Ginkgo reported a third quarter revenue of 55 million USD, marking a roughly 17% decrease year over year. This decline primarily resulted from the anticipated contraction in biosecurity operations amid the winding down of COVID testing. Cell engineering revenue has also disappointed, largely due to the broader economic environment dampening customer expenditure. Ginkgo's forecast for 2023 includes an anticipated revenue of 250, 260 million USD and the launch of 80, 85 new cell programs. Specifically, cell engineering revenue is projected at 145, 150 million USD, while biosecurity revenue is expected to reach up to 110 million USD. This guidance hints at an estimated 60% year-over-year revenue decline in the fourth quarter. It also suggests an increase of 40% in new programs totaling 28 for the fourth quarter compared to the previous year. Ginkgo has faced disappointing cell engineering revenue lately, but they're aiming to ramp up sales efforts in 2024 to boost growth. Yet, the challenge remains in recognizing downstream value, an area where Ginkgo's control is limited. While revenues have dropped, Ginkgo's operating expenses have surged, primarily due to heavy investments in RMD. In the third quarter, RMD expenses, excluding SBC, shot up by 66% year over year to hit 123 million USD. However, a significant portion of Ginkgo's expenses are non cash, encompassing impairments from acquisitions and SBC. For instance, in the third quarter, Ginkgo took a non-cash impairment charge of 96 million USD related to a Zimmergen lease facility. Even excluding this, SBC likely still constitutes around 40% of the revenue, although it's on a declining trend as RSU-related expenses phase out. Presently, Ginkgo's cash burn rate stands at about 300 million USD, but there's an expectation for improvement ahead. With over 1 billion USD in liquidity, 
Ginkgo has substantial runway. However, the company is still likely three, five years away from breaking even, underscoring the importance of prudent cash utilization. In terms of market valuation, Ginkgo's market cap remains at a lofty 3 billion USD, despite its trailing 12-month revenue sitting at only 315 million USD and declining rapidly. The valuation is largely contingent on the downstream value narrative, which, as of now, lacks strong conviction. The potential maturation of programs in biopharma and agriculture could alter this trajectory, but the complete Ginkgo story might take longer to unfold than anticipated.